Oh, hey guys, come on in. You're just in time for my off-road carnage challenge video. Why don't you go have a seat on one of my 5.9 ZJ calfskin leather seats, and we're going to talk about my worst off-road fail. What's up, guys, and welcome to the project. I'm Dan H., and I've been challenged. That's right, I've been challenged, I've been called out, I've been invited to share my worst off-road carnage video with you guys. So today, we're going to talk about my worst off-road fail. Um, the challenge got sent down from the Beater Jeeper. Uh, Kyle, the Beater Jeeper, sent this challenge down to JTM Off-Road. Uh, he talked about a great story when his steering box got detached from the frame and had a nightmare on the trail. Uh, Beater Jeeper also kicked over this challenge to... D e in the garage. Uh, we got a great story from Doug when his wheel fell off. <laughs> we got a great story of Eric getting stuck in the woods on a log on his lunch break. And um, they both challenged me to tell this story. So I hope I don't let you guys down. Um, to warm it up, I'm going to start out with some crazy stories that I had uh, in my past vehicles. And I'm going to end it with a very, very important off-road story. Um, it's a valuable lesson that I've learned. Uh, I carried it with me the rest of my life. Um, and it started when I was just a teenager. Tiny little 14, 13-year-old. And uh, I happened to have that on video. And uh, it took so long to get this video out because I had to scrounge up the footage. So... I hope you enjoy it. We're going to start off with some stories from back in the day of me and my Cavalier. That's right, guys. You heard correctly. My very first car was a 1990 Chevrolet Cavalier. But it wasn't just any Cavalier. It was a Z24. So that means it had the 3.2 liter multi-port fuel injected engine uh, it was two doors it had a wing it had the ground effects and it had some god-awful ugly honeycomb rims which was the first thing I changed when I got it um, that car was great it was my car for the end of high school and one day I was an idiot and I smacked it up crashed but it wasn't a bad accident uh, I was able to drive it home in fact I have never been stranded on the road I've gotten my vehicle home every single time which is kind of contradictory to this whole uh, off-road challenge fail but uh, I've been very blessed to get all my vehicles home uh, nothing got severely totaled um, and I've never been in a serious wreck so thank God for that um, so yeah so I get the Cavalier home and uh, I found a parts car I always find parts cars I found a red Cavalier Z24 and I brought that home uh, I swapped the hood the front bumper the grill basically the whole nose and I think I did a great job. Uh, I buttoned it all up, everything was straight. The only problem was the hood and the bumper was red on a black car, <laughs> and that did not go at all. And I didn't know anything about paint at the time, uh, but I was really good at coloring. So <laughs> I got myself a black magic marker, actually those big fat Sharpies, and I made uh, flames on the top of the red hood. And <laughs> My Cavalier looked like a, a markered on flame job, and I, <laughs> I crap you not, guys. It actually wasn't that bad, but come on, guys. Markers on a car, ugh, jeez, what was I thinking? But anyway, I decided that I didn't want to spend all my time and money on a car that I really wasn't in love with. Uh, the Cavalier was great to me. It was kind of cool, but uh, I've always wanted a Mustang. So I ended up selling, well... First, I had the marker in the rest of the hood. <laughs> I sold the Cavalier to a buddy, and I ended up buying my Mustang. So, on to my Mustang story. And one of the first months I've had my Mustang, uh, I had a incident where I was way out in East Hampton. Now, if anybody knows the geography of Long Island, they'll know that the Hamptons, where all the uh, Manhattan people want to go party at, they go out to the Hamptons in the summer, um, and that's where I come in. They're out there. I need a job, so I ended up working at a shoe store. I was a stock boy at Cole Hahn in East Hampton, and that is one hell of a hike from where I live, especially in one-lane traffic, miles and miles of bumper to bumper. Ugh. It's the worst, and I was doing that in my Mustang. Horrible for gas mileage, clutch, brake, gas, clutch, brake, gas, ugh, just terrible. Um, and while I was doing that one day, clutch cable snapped. So <laughs> called my dad, I was in the middle of nowhere. Hey, I need help. <laughs> he said, where are you, East Hampton? Good luck. So uh, he told me that I could drive 
my stick car without a clutch. So yeah, I actually found out that day that you can in fact drive a manual car with no clutch. So what I did was, the car was off on the side of the road, uh, I put it into first gear, I started the car, and as the engine turns over, the car's gonna buck because there's no clutch, it's already in gear. So as it starts bucking to keep it from stalling, you just hit it with a little gas right away, and it starts. So I started driving first gear, and when the RPMs get up, you get up to that certain speed, just bang it right into second. And I did that all the way home, about 60 miles, took me about an hour to get home. Uh, every traffic light you get to, you gotta shut off the engine, and then when it turns green, you gotta start it again. When you're in bumper to bumper traffic, if somebody slows down too much, you gotta stall out, shut it off, <laughs> start it again. Uh, it was definitely a crazy learning experience, but hey, I'm glad I went through it, and I got home unscathed. Uh, another story in that Mustang, good old blue. Uh, one day I was helping a buddy move into college in Virginia. So um, I went on a road trip, love road trips, right? Who doesn't? Uh, so I'm driving down the road, highway, I don't know where I was, probably in the middle of nowhere, um, Delaware maybe, hit a rock, boom, right into the radiator, starts leaking coolant. Figured, all right, no big deal, right? Uh, every so often, I'll just top off the water levels, get some more coolant, gas station to gas station, we'll be all right. So I go for another couple miles, and uh, it's not going too bad, um, but at some point, it opened up and started really gushing out. So now I'm at the point where I might not be able to make it home. I'm somewhere in between where I need to be in Virginia and where I am from Long Island, uh, and I got a leaky radiator. That's no good for anybody. Um, I remember that I heard a story or something, a remedy, a story, I don't know, but I heard that if you pour in egg whites into your radiator, it will fix the leak. So I was desperate. So guess what I did? The next gas station, got myself some coolant, and I got myself a dozen eggs. I opened up six eggs, and I poured six egg whites into the radiator. I crap you not, guys, put six egg whites in my car. And uh, sure enough, it worked. <laughs> it actually worked. The egg whites cooked, and they got hard and stiff and filled up that hole in the radiator. And I was able to get to where I was going in Virginia. Um, it didn't replace the radiator there. I don't know why I should have, but I figured since I made it there, I could make it home and then do all my work at home. Well, <laughs> while I was on my way home, uh, I just left uh, the place in Virginia and I just get on the highway and the temperature, boom, spikes all the way hot. Uh, I was stuck on the side of the road. I had a little toolkit with me. So uh, I figured let's start opening some stuff up and sure enough, <laughs> oh, all I see in the radiator cat was scrambled eggs just shooting out everywhere. <laughs> I gave myself a good flush on the side of the road, and uh, unfortunately, I went another couple miles, and it's still overheated. Uh, this time, I took off the thermostat, and man, the thermostat was jammed up, full of snotty eggs. It was disgusting. Clumps and clumps of egg whites. I can't believe I did this. So uh, I needed a new thermostat. Um, called up my buddy. He took me over to uh, Blue Oval Industries. Now that's a pretty well-known uh, Mustang parts place, and I actually went there. I drove there in person. It's in Elkton, Virginia. I got myself a thermostat and a gasket, and I changed the thermostat on the side of the highway in Virginia. Got more coolant, uh, topped everything off. I was able to make it home, and <laughs> I ended up changing the radiator. Uh, I think I got myself another thermostat and uh, did a coolant flush, but uh, man, for the next few years, <laughs> I kept finding bits of eggs in the Mustang engine, and uh, that was insane. So uh, yeah, that's a great crazy Mustang story. Um, don't put eggs <laughs> in your radiator. So on to the best story, my, my off-road fail story. Now, I just want you guys to know that I live on Long Island, and it's a flat sandbar, there's no mountains, there's no rocks, I can't really crawl. Um, I think the best, most well-known place to, uh, to go off-roading is like Roush. Um, and that, you know, you gotta throw on your, your rig onto a trailer and then drive out there. So I've never done that. I don't really have a crawler Jeep. I've just had my stock street Jeeps that I like to maintain because I need them to get me to work. That's, uh, that's what I do. 
uh, out here, you go to work Monday through Friday, uh, you drive on the Long Island Expressway or Sunrise Highway, and then on the weekends, we go to the beach. So that's my off-roading uh, scope. My spectrum is limited to sand and the beach. Um, that's why I'm building Beach Jeep. So my very first introduction to driving on the beach, I must have been 13, 14, and my parents' 1997 uh, Ford Expedition. And that thing was just about brand new. So this must be like 97, 98. And uh, my mom, my mom decides to take me, my brother, my aunt, and my cousin out on the beach at Smith's Point Beach, uh, Long Island, New York. They You're pretty good at this. They say stay in the, uh, the line. I'd be, I tell you, I'd be afraid to do this. Why? It's uh, not common on the road. You're driving on the sand. It's, it's, it's fun. Look how clear the water is. So nice. The only reason why I'd be afraid is to think it's going to get stuck. You're going to get stuck. Well, I guess anything is possible. I guess that's why they tell you to bring a shovel. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, if you're talking about getting stuck on the way in, you know you're going to get stuck on the way out. That's called foreshadowing. So. We go way out into the beach, uh, have a great day. Um, I think we played some baseball, had a catch. My brother, my cousin played some paddleboard, you know, standard stuff, nothing weird. <laughs> Kids. You know what? My cousin just got that camera. He was bringing that everywhere we went. Uh, we had a great time with it. And luckily for us, we were able to catch this event on film. So yeah, it was time to leave. We packed it in, we started driving back home. Now, this started innocently enough. Uh, I believe a baseball caught my eye in the sand. So I think I asked my mom to pull over so we could retrieve this ball. Stop, Stop. I found a baseball. baseball. Maybe that was ours. Okay, lost yeah. Back up. Stop. Now, if my memory serves me correctly, the ball was pretty close to the water. Now, you're not supposed to drive near the water, not at all but we maneuvered the vehicle closer to the ball so we were able to retrieve it. I'll go. It's right by that big black like, right, seaweed. Ahead, Mikey, you can get it. Here it goes. So my brother gets out, he runs and gets the ball, he brings it back, he realizes that's not the ball we lost, it wasn't his, so he hucks it back out into the ocean. You got it. Uh, uh, Ours? Throw it into the water. Had it. Throw it. From that point, we just continued straight on to leave, but we should have went directly to the high ground, right towards the soft sand, well, the firm sand, and not into the softer wet sand. So <laughs> we continued on, and we ran into a place where the water separated from the ocean, and it caused a little lake area. And rather than going up and around, we ended up going right through it. But it's fun yeah. the other way. It's not fun. Well, we have way. to go up there when we get closer. Oh, we're gonna go through water. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> a little too much water there. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. We're stuck. <laughs> we're really stuck. I'm kidding. <laughs> oh my! Holy crap! <laughs> oh, uh-oh. Yeah, we were stuck. Now, it was just me, my mom, my brother, my aunt, and my cousin. None of us had off-road experience. We have only taken the truck out onto the beach maybe a couple times, so we had no idea what we are doing. Me being a man of action, I know I had to dig my mom out. I got to get my brother and my mom home safely. That's my job. <laughs> when my dad's at work, I'm the man of the house, right? So I jump out and I start digging. Wait, wait, wait. wait. I got to get a picture. Okay. Hold on, I got to get a picture. Yeah, no. I can't. <laughs> Now the water's coming up. The water's coming up fast. This is getting serious. The water is starting to wash away our tire tracks, and the water's starting to wash the driver's side of the car under. You got stuck in the water. <laughs> we got stuck in the river. <laughs> out there so deep the Coast Guard came for us. <laughs> so thankfully we were only stuck there for a few minutes before some fellow beachers passed by and saw that we were stuck and we needed help. Uh, these guys dropped what they were doing, ran over to our rescue and they helped me dig this truck out. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. 
Ow. <laughs> uh oh. Now it took about two or three guys. We dug uh, basically a sand ramp so we could push this thing out of the hole. Uh, the water was coming, everything was wet, everything was sandy, but we got it out. Tell me when. Give it, just okay. give it a little. Little? Go ahead, give it a little bit. Go ahead. Go ahead, Tess. Yeah! Keep it going! Keep, going. Keep going, she said. Okay, tell me when. <laughs> I don't even know who these guys were. Thank you guys. I think it was uh, a guy in a GMC Jimmy and two guys in a Bronco. Complete strangers. Uh, thank you so much. You guys saved the day. We were able to push the truck out of the water, back onto the drivable part of the beach, then eventually off the beach and back home. But not without some valuable words from a park ranger. He says, never put the water between you and the water. Never put the water between you and the water. <laughs> that water on the left, they'll never do that. Stay above any kind of water. I have to go thank them. Okay. So that's it guys, that's my worst off-road fail story. It's not the worst off-road fail, um, I probably had worse on-road fails like death wobble and my XJ on the way to work, but uh, that's a valuable story, a valuable lesson that I'll take with me for the rest of my life. Um, I will never forget that. Um, there are people that lost their whole vehicles in the ocean, crazy enough as it is. Uh, we live out on Long Island, there's beaches everywhere, and I intend on driving on the beach with my family. Um, for as long as I'm able to. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna apply these lessons I've learned. You know, you gotta bring shovels, you gotta bring boards, you gotta bring recovery gear. And that's all stuff I intend on building into Beach Jeep whenever I get around to it. Um, my off-road XJ for the beach. But um, yeah, so that's gonna wrap up this video. Uh, huge shout out to Kyle, uh, d and &E in the garage, um, JTM Off-Road. Thank you guys for including me into this circle. Um, I'm happy to tell my story and now it's time for me to call someone else out. So since I've been challenged by two people, I think I get to challenge four people. Now the first person I'm going to challenge is Bug. Bug from It's a Bug's Life. Come on girl, tell me your worst off-road fail story. I love that XJ. She's got a limited XJ just like mine, just like Beach Jeep used to look like and they're doing some great stuff with it. Um, trimmy trim trim is coming out good. So tell me, Bug, tell me your story. Now, the second person I want to call out, Tyler. Tyler from Bleep and Jeep. I tried to reach out to you, buddy. Man, I have so much respect for you and what you do on Bleep and Jeep. You have the same thing in mind that I want to do. You want to do an overlander uh, and take your family out overland in an XJ. Man, that's right up my alley. I know you want to fit uh, four kids in there. You got a family of six. Uh, I would love to know how that Project Overlander is going. I hope it's doing well. Um, that garage you're building is awesome. I'm a big fan of you. So I'd love to hear what you got. Tell me your off-road fail story, Tyler. So now number three. The third person I want to call out is Matt from Matt's Towing and Recovery. I just stumbled upon his YouTube channel. Uh, he has got an XJ that he goes out into the deepest of nowhere to recover other vehicles that have gotten stuck. Now, I'm sure he's got a great off-road story, an off-road fail. I'd love to hear it. Um, that XJ he's got, like a custom-built suspension. That is wild. So I'd love to see that. And if you don't have one, man, if your vehicle's solid enough, it never failed, you tow people for a living. So <laughs> you got to have some great stories out there. So Matt, I would love to hear from you. And number four, the fourth and final person I'm going to call out in this off-road fail challenge video is Brad from Trail Recon. Brad, you have an awesome YouTube channel. Uh, you have great Wranglers. You have that Gladiator. Congratulations, man. I know you've been planning to buy one for a long time. I can't wait to see your adventures in it. Um, but I got to call you out, man. I've been talking to John, your friend. Uh, I know he said you're busy planning trips and whatnot. But if you have time, I would love for you to come tell your off-road fail story to us. So that's it, guys. Uh, thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next project. Ha <laughs> ha